I've got my bandsaw moved out into the floor here because I've got a problem that I need to fix. Um, in a couple of videos ago, I made repairs to the bandsaw blade that broke. And since then, I received the new ones that I ordered. This is the new one right here. But when I put it on, I noticed a problem. I'm just going to try to get it off here. And that's, I got a lot of play in my wheel here. It looks like the bearing has worn out and also the holder that surrounded it has opened up. So I guess I need to fix that. Now it still runs fine, but it's something I really want to fix before it gets any worse. Plus I've got a couple other things I want to do with the saw. I want to change this um, blade guide arrangement that I have here. It's, it's fine, but I think it could be better. Also, the one down inside here, maybe do a little bit of tweaking with that. Well, there isn't anything wrong with the wheel itself, so I'll probably re reuse that. Just got to get this nut off by taking this locking screw out. Cotter pin would have worked there too, but I didn't have any. I'm just going to pull that off. Now... There goes the bearing just fell right out. The inside one, there's oil coming out of that too, but it looks like it's in better shape. It might be reusable. Something that I was never happy with was this right here. This is what I'm using to change the tracking on the wheel. It never worked really well. Luckily, it didn't need much tracking, but this i could really uh do this a lot better and i think i'm gonna do that now i'm gonna have to cut this out of here though because it's welded in this is a big piece of quarter inch thick stainless steel that was very tough to weld actually because it's hard and i've got a just a bolt a 5 8 inch bolt welded right onto that and that's the shaft for that wheel. It's strong, but the adjustment is really flaky. Okay, before I do any cutting, I want to measure down from the top of here to the center of the shaft to see where it is and it is exactly 12 inches now i already measured the back of the wheel to the inside of the cabinet here and that was one and five eighths and it'd be 12 inches down for the shaft and then the shaft centered this way is 10 and a quarter I got a piece of uh, stuff here to try to protect my top while I cut this weld. I've got most of it cut. I'm going to try to see if it doesn't look like it's moving. I hope I didn't weld that on the back, but it's uh, entirely possible that I did. I'm going to pound it and see. It's moving a bit, but I'm going to knock my grinder on the floor and break that. No, I think that I I think that I must have welded it on the back too. I've cut I've cut through all of this weld here, but it's not moving. It moves up on top because that's the way it works. It's supposed to bend back and forth. I'll uh, round to the back and I've drawn a line beside that uh, tube that I have in here. And I'm gonna cut a window to have a look. Oh 
Okay, I've got that taken out and I can see, yes, I did weld it on the back here and it looks like a good strong weld too. Not only over here on this post, but on the other piece that's over here. So I'm going to have to cut the slot down deeper into the panel to be able to cut that weld out of the way. Okay, I've got a single well over here and over here and a long continuous one that goes right down to the bottom over on the other side. And that's the reason why it wouldn't break. And it's welded again across the bottom, but I think that that will break. I'm just going to cut this one out over here and work on the other two smaller ones on the other side. That should break now. I should be able to hopefully drive it out, but I don't want to bend this member that's in here either. So. I can see that it's moving a bit, but it's not moving enough. Okay, I got the wrench on here and Let's see, I'm bending the plate. <sighs> Somebody said that my welds aren't strong. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh. That should let go. It's holding it. <clears throat> wow. This is unbelievable, man. Holy fucker! Wow! This is more torture than I signed on for today. That's for sure. Now that I've got that bit of nastiness out of the way, 
I can turn my attention to actually fixing this thing rather than destroying it. I've got the wheel here. Like I say, I'm going to reuse that. Uh, the inside bearing, I pulled that out and it's still a good snug fit in the collar that I made here from plywood. So that's okay. The bearing itself is in still in good shape. So I'll stick that back in, just slip it back in the hole. Now on the other side, uh, I had this sleeve as a spacer between the two bearings so they won't crush together. And then this is a brand new bearing, but the problem here is it's sloppy inside that hole. So I'm going to try to shim that with thin aluminum from a pop can and see if that does it. I got to try to figure this out. I didn't do any uh, planning before this. Uh, mainly because I didn't know what I was up against here. And as you can see, I've got this big slot cut out here. So really what I'd like to have, I've got a piece of hardwood this size, but this is a piece of spruce that I cut out. I'm going to mock something up with this. I want that to go inside here and get a measurement down from the top. We know that it was 12 inches. So I get it. <laughs> I got an idea. Why don't I put a mark on this here? And then I don't have to mess around with the tape. Good one, John. You're smart. Okay. Let's try that again. <clears throat> All I'm going to do is hold this up inside the hole. And I've already made a mark right here on the upright. And that is the center of the uh, shaft. That doesn't have to be you know 100 percent exact i've got some leeway there to move around now ideally you would want this thing to uh pivot back and forth right at that same point so the pin really should be the shaft comes out here and then the pin should be in the same spot but realistically that doesn't make that much of a difference if i'm a little bit lower so what i'm going to do is Drill out for the shaft here and drill out through the side for the pin over there. I've got my shaft, which is just a six inch bolt that slips in here. Now the idea is that this will go in here and then I've also made these two blocks, one for each side that will attach right onto the side of the saw. Remember that this is still just the mock-up for now. And then the whole thing will pivot on this rusty 5 8 inch shaft. Now I can put this in between. Should be snug, but I should be able to still get it in. <laughs> Just to see how it works, I'm going to put a hanger bolt in here. Got my plywood here, which is scrap, and I drilled a 5 8 inch hole for the hanger bolt, and I'm just going to screw it on. And then the idea is a fender washer and the knob on here, and that way, you know, take the clamp off and adjust the tracking that way. This will pull the wheel this way. Okay, moment of truth. Uh, close the cover. I've got the blade put in and tensioned up. I don't have a whole lot of tension on there, but enough. running fine. I'll open it up and 
Let's see how it looks. Tracking looks good. I released the tension from the wheel because I'm getting ready to take it all apart again to make this into a permanent version made from hardwood and bolted solidly to the frame. Uh, I, while I was doing that, I had another interesting idea and um, I don't know if it will work. It will work, but I don't know how well it would hold up. And that's to replace the upper wheel with a series of smaller wheels that follow that uh, curve, you could say. And what they would do is, first of all, there would be that many more um, areas for the load to go. So it would be divided over the whole, um, however many of them there are. I don't think this would be big enough, a little bit bigger than this, maybe three inch wheels. And so every shaft would, you know, take part of the load. So less load on the bearings. Obviously, you need more bearings, but my concern would be the speed of the bearings. I don't know. I'd have to do some calculations on how fast each wheel would be turning because the blade itself turns fairly fast. And it's one revolution of this wheel, but it would be several of a smaller wheel. So that would multiply the speed right there. Uh, tracking wouldn't be that difficult either. You could either make the uppermost wheel track uh, to adjust the blade, or you could make the whole thing mounted on a like a, a rack that would tilt in or out to, to adjust the tracking as well. The big advantage of that, other than you know the load spread, would be you could really increase your depth of cut because you don't have this lower part of the wheel anymore. You have just the upper part. And so you could, you know, maximize the depth, the throat depth without using a longer blade. Um, I don't know why this hasn't been done before. It's, obviously it's more complex, but uh, I think it'd be worth looking at. I'm thinking about it, mulling it over my head. So, um, don't know. Maybe I'll do something with it. Maybe I won't. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. I'm going to leave off with some pictures of the finished thing here. I know I said that I was going to get to the um, the blade guides down here, but I spent way too much time trying to get that steel out of there. So that used up all the day. So I'll have to do that some other time.